Hi guys, happy new year and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay and today I want to sit and talk about what I want to wear and what I'm leaving behind in 2024 because I recently started the 75 days of getting dressed and not buying anything challenge over on TikTok. It's called the 75 hard style challenge and it was started by Old Loser in Brooklyn. Feel free to start the challenge if you want to. I will link her information below because I do think it's such a good challenge. It's really all about getting to know your personal style more and using what you have and being forced to get more creative and also kind of take a look at what you genuinely are wearing every day and choosing to wear. And I thought it just was so timely with my closet clean out series to put myself to the test because I usually will do a one month no buy at the beginning of the year. And so this is just twice as hard. I'm about a week into it. If you wanna follow along, follow me on TikTok, but I'm also posting screenshots of the outfits over on my Like To Know It if you want to know where said pieces are from. I honestly have really enjoyed putting more effort into my outfit every day. Even if I'm going nowhere, even if no one's gonna see it, I'm still gonna document it for myself. I feel like this is going to be a more intentional year for me when it comes to clothing because this is the most stable I have felt in my personal style and I want this year to be more about accessorizing and like refining my personal style. Still experimenting with trends, but within reason, more intentionally. So with that very long introduction out of the way, here are things that I want to wear in 2024 and things that I am leaving behind that I've done in the past, as opposed to saying trends that I hate because there are always going to be trends that don't personally fit you, but that doesn't mean that they're out. They are just not your style. So things that I want to wear and focus on this year are definitely accessorizing. I've seen a huge rise in charm necklaces, beaded jewelry, chunky accessories, and I personally love it. I want to collect more of it. A few years ago, I feel like dainty jewelry was like all that people were selling and wearing. And now every time I go on my Instagram Explore page, it's like huge brooch-like earrings and cocktail rings, tons of layered rings, as well as chunky charm necklaces and beaded necklaces. And it's just so much more playful and interesting. And it's something that I wanna work on more this year because I do tend to just wear the same exact jewelry every day because it's easy, it looks good, but I want to be more playful and more fun. I'm obsessed with OK Fine on TikTok. She makes videos about her fine jewelry collection and she has some of the most interesting and beautiful stack inspiration photos and videos. I've learned so much about fine jewelry from her and I'm someone that has kind of a hard time doing playful and messy. I just am a perfectionist and everything I do just ends up feeling quite calculated. I don't mean to, but I'm like, oh, I'm mixing metals today let me wear my silver and gold watch to go with my silver and gold ring. Like I just, I can't help but just think of everything. And so I think that's something I admire about the like maximalism jewelry trend because it does involve a letting go and an allowing of things to tangle and be messy. And it's just, there's something very charming about it, not to ironically say the word charm when talking about charm bracelets. Glasses, I feel like larger frames, bolder frames are definitely coming in style and that is one of my favorite things. I also wrote down belts with cool buckles because the brand that makes those brooch-like earrings that are really just a modern version of the vintage clip-on earring, makes a belt that has basically like a brooch or a really large, decorative clasp and they're really, really cool. I'm not gonna lie. And then for fashion trends that I want to carry into 2024, I am loving letting go of things that are flattering. I think oversized silhouettes and just embracing what feels good and what you think looks cool is the move. 
cuffed jeans. I think it is such an effortless look. I love when the cuffs are like absolutely massive. I've yet to find a pair that is long enough to do that with, but there's something so effortless about it that's just like, oh, these pants were too big for me, but I'm leaving the house anyway. Like I just don't care. And I love that energy wearing a baseball hat with an otherwise put together outfit. I feel like this is something that I think looks cool on other people, but I'm intimidated to try. So that is something I wanna try out, especially because I have bangs and sometimes you just don't wanna style your bangs. A-line cut skirts and dresses. My friend Lainey talked about this and one of my favorite dresses I've ever thrifted is an A-line cut and it is so hard to find in modern day brands. I feel like an A-line cut just is kind of like a more vintage, older style, and I would be so happy for it to come back. I just think it's very flattering on my body type. So I am all for A-line stuff getting more popular, but I'm also weirdly into voluminous midi skirts. I know I said I was kind of over midi skirts, but I was talking about satin midi skirts at the time. Now. I'm talking about like a linen structured a-line almost midi skirt. And I just think that it is such a charming look. Anytime I see someone do it, it's a bit more of a niche style, but it's a look that I really, really like and something I would love to emulate. Layering with collared shirts and wearing collared shirts more often is something that I am already trying out. But I think with the rise of like preppy fashion, it's just kind of becoming a basic again. And I would have never been caught dead in a collared shirt in like 2019. Trust me, it is new for me. I know it's been a staple for a lot of people, but when I graduated college, I was all about the crop top, graphic tees, bright colors and unif. And now I'm honestly into kind of a more preppy, almost casual style. I think there's something put together and chic about a button up. There's a reason that they've been around for a long time. And I think I just had to let go of seeing them only as like a stuffy item wearing them over your shoulders, layering them with other stuff, allowing them to be wrinkled, I feel makes them feel more casual. I've just been loving the resurgence of stereotypically preppy items being worn in ways that are more unexpected. So like a button up shirt with a leather jacket or ballet flats with a super oversized distressed jean. Like there's just ways to take those items that you might think are outdated or stuffy and make them more fun and modern. I'm definitely gonna continue wearing flat shoes in the new year, ballet flats, Mary Janes, loafers, if any Thing, I am looking for a shoe to wear in the summer that's flat. So please let me know if you have any ideas because I'm already like scheming, okay? I'm gonna add to everyone saying that cheetah print is both in and a neutral because I have always been drawn to cheetah print ever since I was in my Arctic Monkeys cheetah print coat phase, Alexa Chung, like cheetah print will always be in to me. And I think it's a great way to add a pop of interest with like a cheetah print shoe or a bag if you are not someone that likes color because it is a neutral. That is definitely a trend that turned into a staple for me many years ago and I am here for it if more people wanna do that. And lastly, cotton brief underwear. I know not everyone's gonna see it, but I feel like at this point in my life, I've finally let go of like the internalized high school, middle school girls being like, it's not cool to wear brief underwear. And I've, I've let that go. It's cool, okay? Comfort is awesome and I am here for it, okay? Now onto the stuff I'm leaving behind. Buying anything that needs to be altered more than just a jeans hem. I feel like I get very excited when I'm thrifting or shopping about an item's potential and I need to be a little more realistic with what it is up front. If I'm genuinely gonna wear it the second I get out of the store or if it's gonna sit in my closet for six months to a year. So I am gonna keep that in mind when I am thrifting and shopping after my no buy buying anything you're unsure about on final sale. I've made this mistake so many times and 
often it comes from a place of like a scarcity mindset. If I'm at a sample sale, it's final sale. I know it's gonna disappear. I feel like I have to buy things that I have not been thinking about for months. And when I went to my most recent Reformation sample sale, I went there knowing I only want linen pants. I don't want or need anything else. And all I bought was linen pants. But at the beginning of last year, when I went to a Reformation sample sale, I bought at least two or three items that barely fit, that were not in line with my closet that I ended up selling immediately. And if I just sat with myself a little bit longer, I wouldn't have made those financial mistakes. Any of the really cool sneakerhead popular sneakers, I feel like I've bought because I thought they were cool and not because they were in line with my personal style. I'm leaving behind all of my high-waisted jeans and high-waisted pants. I feel like it was finally this past year of looking at myself on camera all the time that I realized high-waisted items only make my short torso look even shorter and I just prefer myself in a mid-rise or if I'm wearing something high-waisted, I'll wear something oversized on top and it just looks a lot better proportionately. It's also just so much more comfortable. I don't like wearing tight clothing and I've accepted that this past year and it's felt really good to just embrace not wearing tight clothing and not trying to be something that I'm not things that are cropped and I feel like that goes hand in hand with not wearing ultra high rises anymore because if you're wearing a mid rise and a crop top, way more of your stomach is out than if you're wearing a high rise and a crop top. So it's just more of like a proportion change. I feel like I'm wearing longer t-shirts. I do still like a cropped jacket, but even a crop sweater to me just doesn't feel as timeless as something just a little bit longer. And lastly, New Balance 550s, Air Forces. Anytime I've tried to wear like trendy basketball sneakers, it just was not, it was not true to me. I was trying it out and I'm glad I tried it out, but it just is not who I am. I am not sporty. I wasn't convincing anyone, you know what I mean? I feel like my kind of sneaker is a New Balance lifestyle shoe or my Converse, you know? Like I'm just not, I'm not a sneakerhead, and um, for whatever reason, it took me a while to figure that out. I also wrote down unworn shoes in my closet because I just have truly so many unworn shoes and that to me is just so excessive and I want to cut things down to like the bare bones of what I love and wear. I wanna wear everything that I own. That is what I want to wear and what I am leaving behind in 2024 when it comes to fashion and styling and personal style, really getting to know what I like. I feel like this will be more fun to look back on than just talking about trends specifically, but I can definitely do a video more focused on de-influencing of a bunch of trends if you're interested while I'm in the middle of this no buy. And I will see you guys with some new content very soon. Definitely check out my TikTok and Instagram if you wanna see more of those daily outfits. And I will see you guys later. Bye.